Hello. Today, we embark on a journey through narratives centered around pregnant women. Our voyage begins with a deeply personal narrative, my contemplation of divorcing my pregnant wife. I am 28 years old male. Find myself caught in a web of hesitation and fear despite the tumultuous circumstances. Our story unfolds two years ago when we exchanged vows, filled with hopes and dreams for our future together. Little did I know that this union would lead to profound regret and heartache. Before marriage, our conflicts were few and far between, typically resolved through open communication and mutual understanding. However, post-marriage, our once tranquil existence morphed into a tempestuous battleground. The news of her pregnancy initially brought immense joy, promising the fulfillment of our shared desire to start a family. Yet, as her pregnancy progressed, a dark cloud loomed over our household. Her temperament shifted dramatically, her once gentle demeanor giving way to fits of rage over trivial matters. Whether it was a misplaced item or a minor oversight, her reactions became increasingly volatile defying reason and rational discourse. Unfortunately, the turmoil didn't stop at verbal outbursts. It escalated into instances of physical aggression, leaving me grappling with emotional and mental anguish. The love and affection that once bound us together now seemed like distant memories overshadowed by fear and apprehension. Every interaction with her is fraught with tension, each step tiptoed to avoid triggering another confrontation. The toll of this toxic environment on my well-being has been profound. The happiness and fulfillment I once derived from our relationship have been replaced by a sense of desolation and despair. Despite my longing for liberation, fear immobilizes me, anchoring me to a life of unhappiness and uncertainty. Thus, I find myself at a crossroads, torn between the desire for freedom and the fear of the unknown. The journey ahead is fraught with challenges, but the quest for inner peace and happiness compels me to confront this daunting decision head-on. She often finds herself unhappy and instigates arguments over trivial matters, escalating them into shouting matches. This pattern has persisted since the early stages of her pregnancy, and truth be told, the warning signs were present even before then. Regrettably, I find myself filled with immense remorse for marrying her, she is not the woman I once loved. In all honesty, I no longer harbor any affection towards her despite her carrying our child. I must confess that our conflicts have taken a physical turn, with one incident resulting in her throwing a fork at me, narrowly missing my eye and leaving a sharp scratch on my face. To avoid further confrontation, I've resorted to fabricating excuses for my injuries, confiding only in a select few about the truth behind the incident. The fear of her has become overwhelming, driving me to seek refuge at my parents' house, where I spend increasing amounts of time to avoid her presence. There have been occasions when her behavior has become so volatile that I've felt compelled to leave in the dead of night, unable to bear being in the same vicinity as her. Despite recognizing the potential influence of pregnancy hormones and the possibility of depression during this period, broaching the subject with her is an impossibility. Any suggestion of seeking professional help is met with vehement opposition, as she adamantly refuses to entertain the notion that she might need assistance. I am aware of her history of depression, including her past use of medication during her teenage years, which she ceased in her early 20s. While she seemed to manage without issue for some time, Recent events have cast doubt on her ability to cope. However, any attempt to address her mental well-being is met with resistance, leaving me feeling helpless and uncertain about our future together. She held little trust in medication or psychiatric intervention, adamantly refusing any form of medical assistance or therapy. Even contemplating counseling felt futile, as if we had surpassed its potential to mend our fractured relationship. Living under such unbearable conditions, I had made the resolute decision to terminate our marriage. Yet, the prospect of broaching this conversation filled me with a deep-seated apprehension. I feared her reaction, particularly given her propensity for violence, especially in her current state of pregnancy. A swirling mix of frustration and fear consumed me, leaving no room for love or affection toward her, only a profound sense of trepidation and resentment. My sole aspiration was to liberate myself from this tumultuous ordeal as swiftly as possible, even if it meant bearing the weight of lifelong child support payments. My paramount concern was to reclaim a semblance of normalcy, liberated from the suffocating grip of this abusive relationship. The safety and well-being of our unborn child weighed heavily on my conscience. 
The thought of entrusting the child to her care filled me with profound unease, prompting contemplation of involving child protective services. It was an agonizing dilemma, and I sought counsel from the community on how best to navigate it. In response, Orange Kitty offered a perspective grounded in empathy and pragmatism, asserting that pregnancy hormones should never serve as an excuse for abuse. Divorce, it seemed, was the most logical recourse, sparing both parties from further anguish. However, it was advised to differ proceedings until after the birth to minimize stress on the mother and mitigate potential custody complications. In the interim, discrete preparations for separation could be undertaken, such as securing vital documents and arranging a safety deposit box. These preemptive measures aimed to ensure readiness for the inevitable transition while safeguarding the interests of all parties involved. If you are concerned about your safety, maintaining a detailed record of incidents, including dates, times, and descriptions of what occurred can be crucial. For example, documenting events such as your wife screaming, throwing objects, or making threats can provide valuable evidence in any legal proceedings, particularly concerning custody arrangements. Additionally, consider discreetly installing nanny cams throughout your home to record her behavior. You can frame this as testing baby monitors if questioned, as modern cameras often connect to smartphones, offering a cost-effective means of monitoring her actions. Furthermore, having a trusted confidant who is aware of the situation can provide much-needed emotional support and a safe space if necessary. It's important to keep supportive friends or family members informed about your circumstances. In response to the advice received, the original poster expressed gratitude and mentioned that they increasingly sought refuge at their parents' house to escape their spouse's behavior. This safe haven provided them with solace during turbulent times. Now, for the update, the original poster has taken decisive steps toward divorce, having consulted with a lawyer and initiated proceedings. They had a candid conversation with their wife, firmly asserting their decision to end the marriage. While her initial reaction was not empathetic, she eventually came to terms with their choice. Prior to this, the original poster also consulted with the obstetrician, providing a comprehensive account of their wife's behavior. However, when the obstetrician spoke with her, she presented a contrasting narrative, denying most of the allegations and accusing the original poster of exaggeration. Despite this, the obstetrician refrained from taking sides or offering marriage counseling, maintaining professional boundaries. If she represented a danger to herself or someone else and had expressed clear thoughts of self-harm, she couldn't be admitted against her will. Quite a wild ride to get things started, huh? All right, on to the next one. I'm a 28 years old male, almost certain that my 27 years old wife of two years is pregnant, but she refuses to take a pregnancy test or go to the doctor despite being very late. Does she have an affair? I'm very confused, concerned, and lost over what to do. This is such a bizarre situation. It's my hope that someone here can help me make sense of this and better understand what my wife may be thinking or not thinking. Lately, my wife has been showing what I think are obvious symptoms of pregnancy, and it seems fairly certain to me that either she is pregnant or has some illness with similar symptoms. If there's even such a thing, I'll get to them in a moment. But the real issue here for me is that she refuses to acknowledge the possibility she might be pregnant, and I have no idea why. Despite it being undeniable that something is going on with her physically, she refuses to even consider the possibility she's pregnant. If I point out all the evidence to the contrary, she'll get angry and tell me that I'm not qualified to make a judgment because I'm not a doctor. Not to veer off too far, but what I also don't understand is why she refuses to take a test. If she's not pregnant, so be it, but what does it hurt to rule it out for certain? If she really isn't pregnant, then she's got other health issues we should be addressing. I've even gone so far as to buy a pregnancy test from the store, so all she had to do was take it, but she won't even do that. As for the symptoms, she's had what I would describe as morning sickness for almost two weeks now. I can't say for sure that's what it is because it comes and goes, but I can tell you that it's new. It's a very recent thing. That alone wouldn't be enough to make me think pregnancy, but she's also experiencing extreme fatigue and seems to be more moody lately, all of which are classic symptoms of pregnancy. But if that wasn't enough, she's also extremely late on her period. Her cycle is usually very regular, and she has never been more than a couple of days off of it in the seven years we've been together. 
She's currently almost three weeks late. Soon before. And I find it hard to believe that this is just a coincidence. As if after all these years she just so happens to be late at the same time the rest of this stuff is happening. I mean, my god, what else does she think it can be? I don't understand how she can tell me that she doesn't think there is any chance. If she represented a danger to herself or someone else and had expressed clear thoughts of self-harm, she couldn't be admitted against her will. Quite a wild ride to get things started, huh? Alright, on to the next one. I'm a 28 years old male. Almost certain that my 27 years old wife of 2 years is pregnant, but she refuses to take a pregnancy test or go to the doctor despite being very late. Does she have an affair? I'm very confused, concerned, and lost over what to do. This is such a bizarre situation. It's my hope that someone here can help me make sense of this and better understand what my wife may be thinking or not thinking. Lately, my wife has been showing what I think are obvious symptoms of pregnancy, and it seems fairly certain to me that either she is pregnant or has some illness with similar symptoms. If there's even such a thing, I'll get to them in a moment. But the real issue here for me is that she refuses to acknowledge the possibility she might be pregnant and I have no idea why. Despite it being undeniable that something is going on with her physically, she refuses to even consider the possibility she's pregnant. If I point out all the evidence to the contrary, she'll get angry and tell me that I'm not qualified to make a judgment because I'm not a doctor. Not to veer off too far, but what I also don't understand is why she refuses to take a test. If she's not pregnant, so be it, but what does it hurt to rule it out for certain? If she really isn't pregnant, then she's got other health issues we should be addressing. I've even gone so far as to buy a pregnancy test from the store, so all she had to do was take it but she won't even do that. As for the symptoms, she's had what I would describe as morning sickness for almost two weeks now. I can't say for sure that's what it is because it comes and goes, but I can tell you that it's new. It's a very recent thing. That alone wouldn't be enough to make me think pregnancy, but she's also experiencing extreme fatigue and seems to be more moody lately, all of which are classic symptoms of pregnancy. But if that wasn't enough, she's also extremely late on her period. Her cycle is usually very regular, and she has never been more than a couple of days off of it in the seven years we've been together. She's currently almost three weeks late, soon before, and I find it hard to believe that this is just a coincidence as if after all these years she just so happens to be late at the same time the rest of this stuff is happening. I mean, my god, what else does she think it can be? I don't understand how she can tell me that she doesn't think there is any chance. She persuaded me to consider starting a family sooner, perhaps even trying next year instead of the following one. Wait, is this really her? She reveals. All I ever wished for was to carry my husband's child. It was a constant daydream for me. Anyway, last year, my husband pointed out that my breasts seemed fuller and suggested I take a pregnancy test. We had just gotten engaged and were planning to travel Europe. So I brushed it off, confident in my body's signals. I delayed it for nearly a month. When I finally took the test, the result was clear. I was pregnant. Initially, I denied it out of fear of how our plans and lives would change. But as the pregnancy progressed, Excitement replaced apprehension. Paula X. Ray comments. People often react strangely when faced with reality compared to speculation. While there's a slim chance she cheated and is carrying someone else's child, it seems more probable that she's simply overwhelmed with fear and anxiety. Best of luck, Opie. Now, onto the final pregnancy story. I experienced infidelity during pregnancy. Currently expecting our second child. My husband began an affair in October, during my second trimester. It was a week filled with slowly unraveling truths, mostly lies. He kissed a co-worker he met on Halloween and started exchanging explicit messages with her the following week. Eventually, he confessed everything, showed me the messages, and even requested a divorce that same night while he was at work. I fell ill from the stress and needed podiolite, which I asked him to pick up on his way home. The next morning, his demeanor shifted entirely. He claimed he would end the affair, prioritized our family, professed his love, and expressed a desire to work on our relationship. I believed him, thinking we were making progress. We were following Gottman's steps, reconnecting intimately, and enjoying family time with our son. However, 
On December 17th, he returned home unusually late and admitted he'd been meeting up with her again, exchanging conversations at work for weeks and engaging in intimate encounters after work each day. On that pivotal day, I found myself rushed to the hospital, my symptoms of concern compounded by my pregnancy. While there, I insisted on undergoing a sexually transmitted disease test and implored my husband to come clean about his affairs so that I could undergo the necessary examinations. Eventually, he confessed that they had been intimate that very morning in a car not far from his parents' house. Strangely, the news didn't hit me with the force I expected. It was almost as if I had been mentally preparing for it, and in a twisted way, I felt a sense of relief that he had finally come clean about his actions. In a brutally honest text message, he poured out his true feelings, admitting that he no longer wanted to be with me, that he had been living a lie for months, and that he had never truly desired children with me. He thought he could tough it out, but the reality of his situation hit him hard, and she became the catalyst for his awakening. He expressed a longing for freedom, unable to bear the emotional weight of our relationship and uncertain about his own identity. Now, we're living separately under the same roof, shielding our three-and-a-half-year-old son from the turmoil until we figure out our next steps. Despite our attempts at therapy, he continued his affair even after our separation, suggesting that he might entertain the idea of reconciliation somewhere down the line but not anytime soon. While I'm open to co-parenting for the sake of our children, having endured the hardships of broken homes ourselves, he's holding out hope for salvaging our relationship, although I'm not actively pursuing it. Navigating through this pain and striving for recovery feels like an uphill battle, especially when faced with daily reminders of what once was. Most days, I can't even bring myself to look him in the eye without feeling a surge of overwhelming emotion. The holiday season, in particular, was an excruciating experience. Yet, I remained determined to heal and make progress amidst this tumultuous journey. I had envisioned making it through the day, especially for the sake of my son. However, following our morning spent opening presents as a family, I found myself crumbling under the weight of my emotions. Tears flowed freely for nearly three hours, even as I tried to focus on preparing meals in the kitchen. Seeking solace and support, I've actively sought out several self-help groups on Meetup, though progress towards finding my own therapist has been slow. Space Ranger 89 extends a heartfelt welcome to what they call the separated in the same house. Club, a designation for a level of pain and hardship none of its members ever anticipated. Within this club, there are two pathways to consider, each with its own array of benefits and drawbacks, and ultimately, the control over the course of action lies in your hands. The first option entails remaining within the confines of the same household. The advantages of this choice are palpable. You're afforded the opportunity to be present for your children's every waking moment providing round-the-clock care and support. In essence, you step into the role of a single parent with full custody, supplemented by some financial assistance from your ex-partner. However, the drawbacks of this arrangement are undeniably profound. By opting to stay, you may find yourself sacrificing your own personal desires and aspirations. You'll be relegated to the role of mere roommates with someone with whom you've experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Furthermore, your ex may persist in their relationship with their affair partner, seemingly indifferent to the emotional toll it takes on you, while you shoulder the lion's share of household responsibilities, all the while grappling with the illusion of their perfect life. Conversely, the second option involves proceeding with a divorce and embarking on the journey of finding your own place to call home or facilitating your ex's relocation. This path presents a myriad of opportunities for growth and self-discovery. You'll have the chance to reclaim your autonomy and pursue relationships that offer genuine love and fulfillment. Moreover, you'll be able to make the most of the time spent with your children, unencumbered by the weight of overwhelming responsibilities. However, it's essential to acknowledge the challenges inherent in this choice. Transitioning to a co-parenting arrangement means relinquishing the day-to-day -day routines of tucking your children into bed or waking them up each morning. Moreover, you'll be bound by the constraints of a parenting plan, requiring adherence to set schedules and guidelines. While this option may offer a pathway to rebuilding your sense of self-worth and esteem, it's crucial to recognize that it won't be without its trials and tribulations.
Nonetheless, when faced with the complexities of such decisions, particularly when children are involved, it's imperative to approach the situation with careful consideration and compassion.